So I'm here from Warner Systems, and we're going to dive into SyncThing on FreeNAS and how to set it up manually. I just did a video on SyncThing. I'll be leaving a link to that where I dive deeper into it. I just wanted to focus today on how to set up manually inside of FreeNAS. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. So I'm not going to dive into all the intricacies of SyncThing. I'll leave a link to the video where I do. But yes, it's private, encrypted, authenticated, fully open source and free, and an awesome plugin to use on FreeNAS. But the official plugin, which is I have running right here, and I loaded it uh, as of today. This is the latest version of FreeNAS 11.3U2. It is April of 2020. So this is all current, and this is I just loaded this today. And the way it sets up is not with an S. HTTP 192.168.3.8 colon 8384 slash sync thing. The official plugin sets up with a reverse proxy. Why am I bringing it up? Well, the challenge with doing it that way is if you go into any of the settings, you notice the uh, listening port is localhost and people go, oh, I can just change that. Well, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because it's running through Nginx. Any changes you have to make here or do make here, you'll have to also go into the plugin and modify Nginx. And obviously this may be uh, problematic because you want to run it in a secure mode. You want to run it with authenticated users, but each one of these are passing through Nginx. And to me, this is a little bit more complicated of a way, but maybe you'll find my other way I'm going to show you complicated. What we're going to do is set this up and then use SSH port forwarding to gain access to it, but we're going to do it 100% manually and I'll show you how to manually set up a jail inside of FreeNAS. This is going to give you the flexibility and once you've manually gone in there, you do have the option at that point and you can bind it to that external IP address. So there's two ways to do it, whether you leave it bound to that IP address or not, and I'll show you. This is one that I'm actually doing for my business docs, graphics, server backups, and yes, it updates my studio videos. Uh, and from here, it is completely bound to the external IP address that was assigned through DHCP. So I went to the system settings, and you can see I have it bound to 000834 from each bound all there, and I have an authenticated user of Tom, and I set a password on this one. So I'm going to show you how to do it this way, or you can use, use the forwarding, which I mentioned in my previous video. So I'm going to kind of show you both ways, but how to set it up manually. It's actually not that hard to do. So we'll go ahead and close all these. And I'll also show you how to map the data in there. I know that's a question people run into and have problems with. So I'll stop this plugin. I don't really need it. I just loaded it to show you that it works. Uh, the default setup works. But please note, any changes you make within there will cause issues in terms of uh, you have to modify the Nginx system as well because of the reverse proxy. So how do you build a manual jail? So let's go ahead and just build a manual jail. Let's click Add. Um, this will we'll call Sync. Thing, YouTube, jail type, clone jail, release, just choose the latest. We're just going to go ahead and hit next. I want it to be DHCP. Uh, it works to me better to set things up as DHCP, and the reason why is because once it's set up DHCP, I'll go in and make a DHCP reservation for it. Uh, I have everything set up as DHCP with reservations in my Sense. From a standpoint of manageability, it makes it easy to list out all the IP addresses. And if I had to change a bunch of them, I don't have to log into a bunch of devices and change static addresses. I modify all the tables in PFSense. And my PFSense is pretty much always up and running. If it's not, um, well, I don't have internet, so it's usually a priority to keep it up and running. Therefore, that's my preference. But yes, someone who is going to ask about manual uh, configuration for um, D, that it is completely possible. Yes, you can do it. I'm just not going to dive into that for this topic. All right, so the jail is up and running. So we have an IP address of this, and we can do a couple different things from here. I say a couple different things because you can go into the shell here and do the commands I'm going to run. Uh, I just find it less convenient to do this, so I'm going to show you how to do the shell from the command line and how to get into this. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of it. But that if you don't have SSH or something, you can completely do this in that little uh, window there where you just open up a shell. So here's the IP address of it. And the jail name is Sync Thing YouTube. So what we're going to do is go over here, and we're going to make this bigger. I'm going to choose the bigger profiles. I sometimes I forget to do that. I know it helps people when you are trying to watch what I'm doing. But all these commands and everything will be in my 
uh, forum. So I'll leave a link just like I did with the other videos where I walk through all the commands so you can copy and paste them yourself, make your life easy. So we're going to SSH into the free NAS box that we're running this on. And then we're going to go IO cage. We're going to open the console this way and uh, it's sync thing YouTube. So IO cage console in. And now that brings me and basically attaches me to that. So like I guess it's the same thing as opening up the shell there. And then from here, now we're going to set up sync thing manually and we're going to set up the packages manually on here. So what we're going to do is do a package update. Make sure we have the latest package update in here. Say yes. Now we're doing this inside of a GL, not actually inside of the main uh, free NAS system. I've heard people ask about, can you do this inside the free NAS system itself? That's a terrible idea. Don't do that. I, I think it may work. There's probably someone who has some write-up on it. Um, do it inside a GL. There's GLs for a reason. This keeps them locked down and separate from uh, the main operating system. All right, all the packages are up to date. Let's install SyncThing. It's going to grab and download SyncThing and install that into the GL. Now, Please note, and we'll address this later, SyncThing was added as a user with 983. That's important, and that's because when we set the permissions for the mount points, uh, we'll show you that I've already got a user created for user 983 because I already have other jails running a SyncThing. It does create the same user each time, so uh, you can do that and just create the permissions when we get to that part. But that's where that information came from uh, later that we'll use. Now I'm just going to paste in the commands because now what we want to do is we want to enable SyncThing. So it's uh, sysrc sync thing underscore enable equals yes. Like I said, these commands will be in the forums. And I want to be able to SSH into this for convenience and to do the wrapping part. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, SSH D enable yes. So that allows us to do SSH. And what we're going to do is look at rc.conf and confirm those things are in there. So sync thing enable yes, SSD enable yes. So we want to make sure both of those are enabled that means they start up when the system starts up now comes a little bit of complicated part if you're not familiar with vim or vi um, it's not too hard to do but want it ssh sshd config so we want to edit the sshd config and slash permit root which is right here we're going to change this to yes because we want to allow root to log in you can always change it back later, probably good for security reasons that you do, but we do want root to log in for the setup of this. And later on, you can lock it back down because once this is all configured, you may not need to go back into it. Um, and you can also set key login. I'm not going to dive too much into, but you can look up how to, to strengthen SSH. Usually not logging in as root is one of them. Also make sure you to choose like key authentication only. That's important. Now there is no password on root as in none at all. Uh, but doesn't mean you can log in, but you can't because you can't log in with a blank password. So we're going to change the password for root. All right, now we have a password set for root. We're going to exit. And what we're going to do now is instead of going and counseling in, we're going to just restart the service because that'll make sure everything starts up. And that restarts this particular jail. All right, we got the same IP address. So now we're going to go into it. And uh, we can see that we have sync thing running and we have SSHD running. Awesome. Those are the two things we need. That's pretty much it for getting that part set up. Now we can actually exit, exit, and go right into here. And if you remember the IP address, we can actually log right into it now. And when we log into it, we want to log into it with the these functions right here. So we're going to SSH dash L for local to local port 8000, because I already have 8384 running sync thing on my local computer. This wraps the port 8384, binds it to, because by default it binds the local host here, 8384. And we're going to do root at uh, the IP address to log into this system here. So, oh, I've already used this before for other demos. So hold on. You shouldn't get that error. Yes. Type in the password reset and away we go. Now I could, of course, from here, load my SSH keys and make automatic login, but you know, not a big deal there. It's other options. I'm not going to get too much into SSH management, but you can find plenty of information on that. But what we did was we know sync things running. We have it set up on here and we went, I'm going to open up uh, Firefox. So I have another browser opened up. 
I'll go ahead and say yes to an anonymous usage statistics and away we go. I now have access to my device. Now from here, we can go to the actions settings. And if we don't want to keep doing this SSH thing, we can change this to zero, 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 Tom. All right, pretty simple and save. It's going to give me an error about directory permissions. We'll get to that in a second. Now we're still logged in through localhost, but now we can actually type in eight three eight four. Make sure you get the IP address. So one nine two one six eight three dot one seven seven. The IP address of that particular jail. And now we're logged in. Now the last thing is obviously I didn't do it with secure, but let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I will go back over here to settings. And we'll check the little box here. The color scheme makes it hard to see that box, but if we check the use this for that, it's gonna restart again. Accept and continue. And now we're logged in using HTTPS. Simple as that, now I can directly get to this as needed. Now from here, for, for some security standpoint, yeah, maybe you wanna turn off, you can even completely turn off SSH because you're not needing it anymore um, or turn off root login, you know, for extra security to lock it down because now you don't need to log in and do the tunneling anymore. You now have easy access. Now, one other side note to this, and uh, let's go ahead and break this connection, is if we go back into the jail, just SSH back into it, um, user, local, Etsy sync thing is where the config file is. And then from here, you can actually take a look and go into the config.xml. Whoops, by not vim. And you could have manually done all this as well in here. So if you wanted to manually change things without doing some of the other steps, this is completely optional here. You can just go to the GUI enabled and set each of these here and manually set like I said, each function. Actually, you'd probably start with not putting a password in um, and then put the password in so it does the hashing and everything here. So, and then pretty straightforward. So there's a couple different ways to approach it, but I just have it of doing it with the tunnel wrapping so I can make sure I'm following the UI instead of making a mistake typing in the XML file, but the preference is yours. Now from here, it's actually set up and running. Obviously it says default folder stop because we need to set up permissions and we don't even need the default folder. I usually don't start with that one anyways because it has some silly name that I don't care about. So before we can add any folders, we're actually gonna have to stop this plugin and add some mount points for the data. So we hit stop. Then we're gonna go to mount points. Before we go there, let me just show you how the pool's configured because I have this already set up with sync thing YouTube demo. So here's a data set I created, sync thing YouTube demo. Here's the user I created. Sync thing. When you add a user, and when you add specifically user 983, you type in the username, and I went and I can't do it twice because it's already here. You edit the ID and group to B983. So then I called the user sync thing. You can call it whatever you want, but sync thing seems like a pretty obvious choice. And then you give it user ID 983. Then when you go over to the data set here that I created, so here is the sync thing YouTube it was a specific demo. Don't edit ACL, edit permission. So if you try to edit the um, advanced permissions, it's just not needed for this type of share. You don't need the full ACL. You can just edit basic because they're really simple permissions. The only thing we're sharing in here, unless you're doing something different, then uh, your use case will vary there. But if you just want this to be a storage place for sync thing, you can just set user sync thing, group sync thing, and this is just basically those users that I had set up, and make sure the user has the read-write access. Choose if you need any of the other access, but pretty simple. So mount, dozer, sync thing, YouTube. This is a data set I created. Let me go back over here to the jail itself. Go here, mount point. And we're going to add a mount point for this. Now, source mount point is the real free NAS. What data set do you want to do this? We're going to say same thing YouTube. You, I could have sub data sets under it. I'm just using this as an example. Um, you could create 20 different folders under it if you wanted to, or 20 different data sets under it. it comes down to how, you know, like your use case. Where do you want to mount it at? Out of habit, I like 
mount. So slash MNT, and we'll give it uh, the same name. We'll call it sync tube, a little similar name. So this is inside the jail. Now inside the jail, it's nested. Jails only see what's nested. So they see this part here where they'll see just uh, mount and then sync tube. From outside, you see it here. This is the inside of the jail. Um, and jails can't go, they can only traverse so far. They are basically nested within there is the best way to describe it. But we'll just hit safe. Pretty straightforward. It's going to create that folder. And when we start the jail back up, let's go back over to jails. Start. And if we SSH back into it now, there's that sync tomb folder under mount. So the jail, because it's nested, sees it there and it sees it as the owner of sync thing, which means when we go into sync tube, I have permission to uh, touch files and remove files in there, which is important because now we're gonna go over here and log back in. So it's just refreshing the page. We're gonna add a folder slash MNT sync tube give it a folder name if i was to use this as a server i'd probably do some file revisioning and set all the configurations like i covered in the other video and we're good it is now running at this address it is running the latest version right here 1.40 um and it works so i can add remote devices set up all the configuration uh it was able to if we go back in and look one more time There's that folder it creates, the .st folder for the revision. So it had permission to do the right, so no errors there. And you're done. Now you can start the other process, which I covered in there for adding remote devices, getting everything synchronized, and everything is now you know accessible. So port 2200 on this will be listening, or 22,000, I'm sorry, uh, will be listening on here so we can set other devices. And I guess for the hell of it, I'll set up one device on it. So this is my Windows system I had for the demo the other day. So I've already got documents and downloads in here already configured. And uh, let's go ahead and attach it to that particular uh, FreeNAS instance. So we'll go over here. We'll close, we have too many windows open. And we're gonna get the device ID. So, so we're gonna go here, show ID. Device ID, demo. You can say dynamic, but we'll go ahead and specify the actual port that it was running on. Paste in the address here, 192.168.3.177, 20, port 22,000, the default port. We left everything in there. We wanna share those folders with it and hit save. Then go back over to this. Close, and in a few seconds, this should pop up and say, hey, this device would like to attach. Actually, while we're waiting, we'll remove this because I'm not going to be using this one. Say yes. Yes, we're going to add this device. It's the Winders Pooter. Save. Wait a few more minutes. Uh, well, sometimes about 20 seconds. It kind of varies, but there's like a pause after you accept it, then it starts again and sends out the signal to share what folders that we have shared with it. And there they are, they popped up. So let's uh, add them. So there's a documents folder and we just have to change the path to mount sync tube and we'll call it docs. We'll leave everything else at default there. I mean, we could turn on a file versioning because technically if I was gonna make this a server, I maybe want 10 revision of the files. So hit save, that one's created. We'll add this one, same thing. Slash mount sync tube, and we'll call this one download. And maybe we want to keep some file versioning for that. Maybe only five revisions of the downloads. And in a few seconds here, it's going to synchronize, and away we go. It'll be all set. Actually, while we're waiting for it to synchronize, we'll go ahead and be, uh, we're logged into the jail here. There's those file folders that were created. And once it's done synchronizing, uh, they'll be populated with all the data. So, oops, documents. 
still waiting on synchronization. As soon as they sync, it'll be all set. And it's just like diving in what I did with all their beta. There we go. All the files just started uh, synchronizing. There's all the files that just got copied over. And that's it. It's ready to go. Actually, now we can LS in here. And all the same thing as I covered in the other video, all the other details of anything I edit here get synchronized across. But usually you're not doing it. FreeNAS is a great place to keep it as a repository for all your data. So it's usually where you have a lot of redundancy and drive set up. Now I can administer this. Like I said, if I wanted to be a little bit more secure, I can go back and uh, turn off SSH on it so it's more locked down and turn it on an as needed basis. Um, but this is it. It's all configured and set up manually and fully featured without any reverse proxies or anything set up and we are using https to administer this and once again if you wanted to modify things or set this up later with another reverse proxy like i had talked about with ha proxy and pf sense so you're not dealing with self-signed certificate that can be done here as well but generally speaking once this is set up i don't spend a lot of time in sync thing on my server it, once you have it set up and done it just synchronizes all my files like it has been for years and works very happily so that's how to set it up in FreeNAS. It's an excellent tool to use in there. Uh, it makes really good use of and a good secure way to keep all of your files and personal synchronization between you and maybe even uh, coworkers or any devices that you have to sync. Um, you may have noticed when I was talking about even for my own company, it's easy ways you can load this on different servers and uh, create a backup strategy with it. So as servers generate certain files, um, you can have those files and have sync thing running locally on the computer and then synchronizing and then all that gets consolidated with revisions and synchronized back across to their location. So it's a pretty diverse tool. I really recommend it. And that's how you set up in FreeNAS. Thanks. Oh, and everything will be in the forums, as I said, for all the commands I used. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.